on. It's called You Are Here, and it's about another little small town called Whitehorse, but it's not really that small. But it is because it's uh, very isolated, and I grew up in a place called Porter Creek, just outside of Whitehorse. I am a Porter Creekan. <laughs> Proud Porter Creekan. See, the only way you can get to downtown Whitehorse from the Alaska Highway is by going down the Two Mile Hill. Now, the story I always heard was that the Two Mile Hill got its name on account of how it's, well, it's two miles long, right? From the highway cutoff right to Main Street, downtown. But then just recently, some guy cornered me at a happy hour at the Capitol Hotel in the back room there to inform me that actually, no, no, no. Two Mile Hill got its name because although it's only one mile long going down, it's just like it feels like two going back up, right? <laughs> Who knows the real story, though? Because the guy that told me that last bit, well, frankly, he was drunk at the time. Plus, almost everyone in his family has been known to be playing a long game with a short hand, as my grandmother would say. <laughs> so however it came by its name, the Two Mile Hill wraps itself like a bent elbow around the clay cliffs that frame the west side of downtown Whitehorse, the old part, full of all those little wooden shacks built in the 40s by the soldiers so they'd have a place to live when the highway was finished, right? And the clay cliffs... I'm not totally sure about this part. It's just a theory I have. The clay cliffs, I think they got their name because they're made of clay. <laughs> just a theory. Cool, gray, soft, silky between your fingertips when it rains. So a couple of years ago, someone from the government, who didn't grow up there, so didn't know any better, I guess, decided that the Two Mile Hill in this new millennium, well, it wasn't metric enough for the times. You think I'm joking, but I'm serious. And they tried to change the name of the hill. They did change the name of the hill to Jack London Boulevard. <laughs> but only the tourists ever know. Only the tourists they ever called it the Jack London Boulevard. No, nobody else would know that. Fuck you're on about, eh? If you said hang left down the Jack London Boulevard there, or I was driving myself up the old Jack London Boulevard one day. And so the new name never stuck. Now, I could not help but notice when I came home a couple of Christmases ago that they had given up finally on the whole Jack London Boulevard thing and an even bigger sign had been erected that said, uh, Two Mile Hill. <laughs> you know, just so folks would know to keep on calling it what they had been calling it all along. <laughs> now, see, it is stuff like this that makes my dad bury his cash in the ground behind his shop. <laughs> just so the government won't get their hands on it, do things with it, like spend it all on fancy big signs for old roads, new names nobody uses. <laughs> How much that fucking fiasco's set the old taxpayers back, eh? <laughs> he says to me, gearing down for the curve halfway down the hill, steering with one elbow so he could light a smoke. <laughs> now, a couple of years ago, oh, well, used to be, the bottom of the hill on the left-hand side of the road into town, there was a marsh, right? All full of willow bushes, flash of silver side of their leaves when the wind picked up. Scruffy pine and spruce trees reaching their long roots down into that permafrost for a foothold to fight the wind from. Marsh filled the space between the river that ran past my hometown and the road that led into it, and it was lush and green. I'm talking about northern standards here, right? All full of birds, antique bottles and cans left there by the old timers, the dreamers, and the drunks that used to live down by the river till the city tore their shacks down, made them pay taxes built a proper dump to put all those empty bottles in. I used to drive past that marsh every morning at 5 a.m. on my way to work, serving breakfast to busloads of retired American tourists on their way to see their 50th state. I worked the 5.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. breakfast shift in the dining room of the Travelodge Hotel for five summers and on weekends in the winters. Now, everybody in town still called the hotel a Travelodge back then even though the new owners had bought it up years ago and renamed it to Sheffield, but nobody called it that, even though they printed up new menus and everything, and they made us wear these seafoam green uniforms instead of our usual black pants and white shirts. And then they uh, put this buffet breakfast table thing in too, eh? Just so they could feed more Americans, you know, faster. I'll let you think on that for a minute. Yeah. Okay, which for some reason meant less uh, tips, eh, for the wait staff. I could never figure that out because all we had to do is like, they could just get up and serve themselves now, couldn't they? All, all we had to do is bring in the coffee and the water and the prune juice and the bill and clean up after them. 
And then they sold it off to this American company who renamed it the Westmark, just like their hotels all over Alaska and the Yukon. And then we had to put up this customer is always right sign. And we had to wear these little gold name tags that said our real names on there. And um, we had to carry around these little trays of sour cream and chives and fake bacon bits for the baked potatoes and say things like, welcome. Welcome to the Westmark Whitehorse, gateway to Alaska, the last frontier. Would you care to look at our menu or would you just like to help yourself to our breakfast buffet? <laughs> <sighs> Got so every once in a while I'd leap out of a dead sleep, hey, and a cold sweat, smell of Ben Gay, butter toast, all caught up in my nostrils from the day before. <laughs> I'd slip out of bed into that long blue dawn down the highway into town. Every time I drove past that marsh, I'd have to slow down. It's like 30, 40, maybe 50 clicks or so, just in case a fox or a coyote came darting out of the bush. One time I saw a lynx. Do you know what that is? It's a wild cat. I saw a lynx. I'm not kidding you. Come gliding out of the underbrush, cross both lanes right in front of me, four satiny strides. Watched a blue heron gobble up a frog one morning, image of its impossibly long and graceful legs. Caught behind my eyelids whenever I closed them. Got me through my shift that day. So a couple of years ago, you're gonna love this bit. <laughs> Walmart Corporation. Talked the city of Whitehorse into paying several million taxpayers' dollars, which they then refused to pay back. Several million taxpayers' dollars to backfill that marsh with gravel so they could build a store there. Think of the bargains. <laughs> Think of the jobs it will create. My aunties, they all argued with me. Think of the bargains. Finally, we won't have to pay whatever. The shops on Main Street decide we're going to have to pay for a new pair of jeans. Plus, they're going to have a pharmacy. And one of those machines you can print up your digital photos on with the red eye removers and the white borders. The whole nine yards. <laughs> Finally, we won't have to... Finally, everything you can get in Vancouver or Edmonton, but without the plane ride. <laughs> so now when you take that corner that still wraps itself around the clay cliffs, halfway down the two-mile hill, you pass by a Walmart. There's a two-car lots, brand-new Superstore, uh, Mark's Workwear World, brand-new Canadian Tire. There's an M&M Meats. There's a Dollar Store. There's a Radio Shack. Oh, sorry. The Source family restaurant, and my favorite, a drive through Starbucks, eh? <laughs> oh, it's all squat and a neon square bordered by sidewalk where the marsh used to be. Now the gateway to the last frontier looks a lot like Thunder Bay, or Flin Flon, or Wanawan, or Port Alberni, or Fort St. John, or Fort Nelson, or Squamish, or Canada. Sad. The ravens gather and gurgle behind the McDonald's. That blue dumpster there in the pavement gets so hot in the summertime, it's like a desert of concrete, eh? Sprinkled with little bits of shriveled up French fries and the glint of hubcaps left behind from when those RVs' tires scrape up against the curb. The city workers had to pour around that new traffic circle. Now we got a brand new KFC, Burger King. Two Tim Hortons, they say. One for smokers, one for those who have quit. <laughs> now Whitehorse looks just like anywhere else, at least from the warm side of the windshield, hey? I mean, just passing through. If it wasn't for those sideways sloping shadows, still slant across all that chip seal every July. If it wasn't for the shape of the slow curve and the clay cliffs that still shelters a place where the marsh used to be. If it wasn't for the shape of the curves in the river that still runs past where they built that new Walmart, well then maybe, maybe I wouldn't know I was home at all. <laughs>